Welcome back to Don't Just Sit There, Do Something for climate news, climate science, and easy ways you can help. I'm your host, Joylette Portlock. First, landmark news. President Obama recently became the first American president to address climate change head on. On June 25th, Obama announced concrete plans for doing something. Um, I thought the birds were bad. If pigs are going to start flying, I am not taking any chances. Obama's plan bypasses congressional opposition by acting through the powers of the executive branch. I'm just going to go m move my car. When humans burn fossil fuels, oil, coal, and natural gas, and cut down forests, we release carbon pollution that traps heat into the air. Climate disruption because of this pollution is already happening. What we do now determines how big the changes will be for the next century and beyond. Obama's called for EPA regulation of carbon pollution by 2015, increasing renewable energy, preparing states and communities for the climate changes we're stuck with, and actually working internationally to solve the problem. Working with other countries, but they might get their stink on us. I thought we were going to keep playing take our ball and go home. That is such a Great game. Reaction to the plan from Congress has been as swift as it has been predictable. House Speaker John Boehner said he hated the plan before it was even released. And some members of Congress have even switched from calling it Obama's war on coal to calling it an out-and-out -out war on America. They probably changed it because people know that coal mining has a lot of downsides. Ironically, a study just out of Carnegie Mellon University concluded that coal states are some of the best states in the nation for wind and solar installation from a climate and a public health standpoint. Scientists and environmental groups are cheering the action. Obama's plan is a critically important first step. We need many more steps like it before we get to climate stability, but we've been working a long time to see this kind of leadership from the top on climate change. Climate change is not just an environmental issue. It's also in our national interest to address for many reasons, including health, the economy, and national security. Most people don't realize that climate change increases conflict. The last time climate change came up at a family gathering, there was some conflict, all right. The argument about whether man-made climate change is real is over in the scientific community. It's real, it's urgent, and it's getting worse. U.S. military heavyweights coined the term threat multiplier to refer to the effect of climate disruption on some of the world's most volatile places. Climate disruption is already putting an increasing strain on resources we humans all need, like water. According to the 2009 report, Global Climate Change Impacts in the U.S., which was put together by 13 federal agencies, we will have to deal with conflict over water supply right here at home. More heat means melting glaciers and mountain snowpack, which over time means less water flowing in rivers. Well, you know what they say out west. Whiskey's for drinking, water's for fighting. Also, warmer temperatures and unsustainable land use lead to drought in many places. Some vast water resources have already almost disappeared, like Lake Chad near the Darfur region of Sudan. Oh, but life there is so peaceful. I'm sure a little thirst isn't making anything worse. We talked a while ago about how the increase in heat affects sea level. This century, sea level rise because of climate change could displace hundreds of millions of people. And if you don't see how hundreds of millions of refugees worldwide is a security concern, I've got some low-lying island property in the Pacific I'd like to sell you. If you don't like the idea of sacrificing our security and our climate so that we can keep using dirty fuels, don't just sit there. Do something. There's a lot we can all do to make a difference, so here are two easy actions, one at an individual level and one at a larger level. First, do your part to conserve water, money, and power with smarter showers. Shave two minutes off your shower time and eliminate 15 pounds of carbon pollution a month. Try to get down to five or six minutes and install a low flow shower head. There are many on the market that feel just fine and they often pay for themselves with the first few showers. Secondly, support the president's plan to begin dealing with climate change. Click the link below to thank him for his leadership. Take shorter showers and support the president. In other words, don't just sit there. Don't just sit there. Don't just sit there. Do something. Thanks for tuning in. 
Next time, we're going to talk about an idea that doesn't get discussed much outside of business schools, but explains why protecting the environment is so often an uphill battle. Join us to find the humor in the tragedy of the commons. You can follow the show on Twitter, Facebook, Google+, YouTube, iTunes, or on the web at djst.tv. So watch again and tell your friends. Please tell me that was just a sound effect. That was a sound effect, right?